One of the most common questions that I get asked is, are there any books that you would recommend to learn about color science? And yes, there are. And here is my top 10 of the books that I would recommend if you're interested in learning about color science and digital image processing. I'm going to start with my book number one. And uh, this is the book by Charles Poynton, which is called Digital Video HDT, because um, it is going to be really hard for you to do any color science calculations, you know, where you need the reference values that are related to Rec. 709 or sRGB or any other SDR color spaces. And you're really best off to take those reference values from this book, because if anybody really knows, you know, about this subject, then it's Charles Poynton. And, uh, you know, I kept coming back to this book for years, you know, because every now and then I know I really kind of, you know, maybe find something on internet that I think it's not correct. And I look up here in this book and then I realize, yeah, it's not correct. So it's kind of good to have a book that is a reference, um, that is actually accurate as well. As such, this is one advantage of having books in comparison to the internet. You just kind of know someone has taken care of it and someone has paid special attention to give you accurate information. I especially like uh, chapter 22, which is, you know, dealing with a subject of color science, you know, and, and, and really a lot of math that I used later, you know, for maybe calculating saturation or, you know, f you know, formulas for, you know, sRGB or X709 gammas and stuff like this. You know, I, it was really all um, that I have referenced in this particular book. Now, this is also a technical book. You don't read it from the first page to the last page. You only go in there to find the information that you need, of course. So it's not just one of those that you start reading from the beginning till the end. I made that mistake at the beginning. I kind of thought, oh, this is like a kind of, you know, a, a book of poetry, right? I start from the first page and then I realized, no, 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 this is not the right way. You need to actually just read really just go look what's interesting to you find that information from that information go to something else so literally you're just kind of you know researching your subject by going through certain parts of your book the next book that i would like to recommend on number two is easier reading than the technical book yes you can actually really read this book uh, you know from the beginning till the end it's actually really interesting because this book deals primarily with the history of what we are doing it's called magic and miracles and it's uh, been released for 100 years of more moving image science and technology so this is basically sempty celebrated 100 years and has released this book and it's absolutely interesting read if you like history of what we are doing and also like it might remind you that actually back in the day you know in like 60s and 70s you know working you know in television was as exciting as flying to the moon i believe i mean it was revolutionary what you know we were doing back then and how we were inventing everything that we're doing here but also like this book goes beyond you know early television and actually explains some sort of really interesting facts about kodak and you know technical approaches and interesting things and i believe the winter resolve has also made it into a book there is a screenshot from you know our you know favorite piece of color grading software in any case it's great actually you know to go through it and really learn and understand you know how did we come to the where we are because it's very easy to take things for granted now that you know everybody's got a screen in front of their faces actually it took us quite a lot of time and quite a bit some actually quite genius inventions before we were able to you know transmit pictures and do everything that we can do today the book number three that I would like to recommend, it's called Digital Color Imaging Handbook and it's been edited by Gurav Sharma and it's been released by CRC Press. What uh, this book actually is, is a more of a collection of works of scientists who are top 
of this particular field and then Gurav has you know managed to edit and collect you know some really 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 interesting articles that are you know related to digital color imaging so there is an interesting contribution to this book by Mark Fairchild from Rochester Institute of Technology, some other really leading scientists who explain the concept of color quantization, gamut mapping, you know, device characterization, you know, what color image processing goes inside digital cameras and so on and so on and so on. So actually, you know, filled with lots of interesting information with actual, you know, functions that, you know, you can start really using um, if you decide that you want to use some of that image processing and using yourself. So far, the books uh, that I was suggesting were covering primarily image processing that we can find inside, you know, for example, color grading systems. But if you decide that you want to venture outside from, you know, what has already been given to us inside the color grading and you want to explore if there is anything that lies, you know, outside of the current use of digital image processing, at least when it comes for grading, then this is a great book. It's called Fundamentals of Digital Image Processing by Anil. Milka Yain, I hope all this supposedly <laughs> I have pronounced his name correctly. I really apologize if I haven't. In any case, this is an interesting book because there is a great chapter as well that deals with image perception and color vision, you know, so because, you know, a lot of digital image processing is based around, you know, the way and what we have learned, you know, about image perception. It, there is also like, a, you know, some interesting image transforms uh, that, you know, we don't necessarily use in uh, image processing, like frequency based transforms, Fourier transformations and so on so there is actually really a lot of interesting things in this book that go as i said a little bit you know beyond you know to what you normally find in grading systems this is probably you know what you would imagine what you would find in plugins or something like that and so we arrive uh, to the book number five and this one is called color for the sciences by jan kendrink and this is actually a book that was written by this amazingly interesting Dutch scientist. And I actually had a chance of um, having to listen to one of his talks. And I think he's a really entertaining, um, you know, scientist. I, I quite like that. And I would say, even though this book is called you know, um, uh, color for the sciences. This is really a book about colorimetry. You know, it's a book about how, you know, we have, you know, developed colorimetry. And what's very interesting to note is that, you know, somehow, in, at least in the kind of educational, you know, circles that I was in originally, you know, Newton was everything. We kind of have always related to color, you know, through the Newton's, you know, ways of what he discovered. But, you know, there was actually a strong kind of, you know, lineage almost of color scientists and, and, and physicians and other scientists who were working in Europe who actually did not necessarily agree with everything that Newton claimed and you know and, and it starts you know already like with Thomas Young and then everything that James Clark Maxwell did and then you know we have a Hermann Grassmann Arthur Schopenhauer very important you know thing that he did then you know Wilhelm Ostwald Joseph Cohen and so on and so on and so on all all the way until Alfred Mansell and Ewald Herring. So these are all people who have actually done a very interesting work, you know, going just beyond to, you know, what was originally kind of, you know, discovered by Newton. And, and it's this book actually that, you know, you can, you know, learn a lot about it and a lot about, you know, computational side. But really, I think this book should be called, you know, book about colorimetry, because this is really one thing that you're going to learn, you know, incredibly well by you know reading this book and then so we come to the book number six and i can already hear you he said wait 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 you know i thought these are books about color science you know this is a book by vittorio storaro scrivere con la luce i colori gli elementi Hope, you know, this is my kind of the best Italian pronunciation that I was able to do. Actually, there is one thing when reading this book, you know, you are really going to be able to learn some Italian because the book is half, half, you know, half in Italian, half in English. So you can kind of pretend that you can read something in Italian and then you know exactly what the translation is. So in this case, what I just said says writing with light, colors 
and the elements. Now, why I really chose this book and why I put this book kind of sometimes in the, somewhere in the middle and following, you know, we really should not forget the reason why we are doing this, the reason why we are, you know, exploring color science and digital image processing and why we are really trying to achieve with it is exactly this. It's to tell the story, is to help an artist express themselves artistically through an image. So, you know, it is really pointless for us to kind of spend huge amounts of time studying about color science if we don't, you know, remind ourselves what's the really reason why we're doing it. And there is nothing better than Vittorio Storaro and this book really to remind you about it. You know, it's poetic, it's amazing, it's wonderful. The way how he writes about color, about image, about composition is just wonderful. It's wonderful. And you can tell that my book has been, you know, traveling with me for quite a lot. I mean, I used the, this book for a lot of inspiration for, you know, looks I was designing and thoughts I was having and, and approaches, you know, I was taking to sometimes design a look. So, you know, it's great. It's actually really important sometimes, you know, to connect back to the artistic side of our job and remind ourselves really why we are doing it that we are doing it. To me, this book was, you know, one of the biggest miracles or discoveries I have ever made. And, and this book is called Seeing the Computational Approach to Biological Vision. It's the second edition that I have here and it's written by John Frisbee and James Stone. You know, this is actually unbelievable, you know, how much we know about our visual system, you know, about visual cortex, about, you know, really the, the whole, you know, neurological side of, you know, the visual system as well. You know, you're going to learn, you know, by reading this book really intricately how our eyes work and, and, and how the sensors work and, and really, really, but one of the most, you know, amazing things you're going to learn is something which is called brain maps and the fact that we can actually really photograph our visual cortex and be able to recognize to what eyes are seeing based on those patterns. And that was actually really mind blowing. When I read that, I was like, okay, really, this is, this sounds like a science fiction, but no, it's actually <laughs> a reality. This is really what we can do today. It's actually interesting because I find that so far our industry has always found inspiration in developing based on you know how what we were discovering about human vision and perception and this book is definitely something that is describing the cutting edge of what we know today about the way how we see and I like it for that reason a lot. I kind of, you know, selected seeing book, I kind of had to also remind myself, you know, there is any other book that has actually taught me a lot about seeing, <laughs> and there is, and, and it's actually a really interesting one, and this book is called Visuelle Wahrnehmung or Visual Perception from Jörg Nenny, and um, Actually, you know, this Visuelle Wahrnehmung, as the title suggests, it's written, you know, by a German scientist. And um, actually, you know, I really have to tell you that I think that I have learned more about the way how we see and perception from this book than any other book. Because really what this book does to you, it makes you question, you know, if what you see is really what you see. And, you know, like it's a great kind of, you know, continuation, you know, from the previous book about seeing when you understand a little bit the mechanics to how brain is trying to process process the image and then you get faced with challenging images for brain you know there are some images that actually just kind of break our you know reality we are not anymore sure if what we see is what we see and this book is really full of those images it's actually really really interesting i kind of you know best can summarize this book at the end of it you know you're going to say one and one is not two you know <laughs> there is something a little bit more you know, to the way how we see. So I can totally recommend this one. Now that I got only two places left, I decided to focus on the subject that I think if you are, you know, starting to learn about color science and image processing today in 2021, then I think you should not ignore what is happening with AI. And, you know, this is really technology that's going to change, you know, things the most. And I think if you're starting to learn about it now, well, it's great to cover all of that kind of knowledge that we have accumulated so far. Don't lose sight of these new things 
science because you know this is really where you as a kind of young color scientist and developer you could really make a kind of a mark and i actually think that we don't have enough people who have moved into this area so if you're actually sitting still on the fence and you're wondering hey is ai something for you then i think you should read this book first and it's a book by joseph weizenbaum and it's called computer power and human reason this book was released back in 1975 and it's talking about AI and actually in such a way that it's absolutely fascinating. Now, first of all, you need to know who is Joseph Weizenbaum and he's a creator of ELISA. Okay, and Elisa was created back in 1967 and uh, she was the first conversational agent. You know, she was basically somebody you could talk to. You know, it's amazing that back in the day when computers were so primitive that where they were in 1967, somebody was actually really able to create a conversational computer, which was more interesting and, and actually. You know, more entertaining to talk to than, you know, like, you know, what Microsoft did with their bots recently, where they kind of completely flopped with it. I discovered Elisa at an art exhibition. You know, this is, you know, how crazy it is today. You know, those first examples of AI development have become pieces of art. And I totally agree with that. It's actually amazing, you know, to how good Elisa was working. So what Joseph Eisenberg did, you know, based on that experience that he did, he has written a book about it. And especially what he's talking about is how easy it was to convince humans that there is an intelligent being and, and he kind of is completely against this kind of uh, overuse of term intelligence, artificial intelligence, you know, he kind of, you know, says that there is a big difference between true human intelligence and, you know, what we consider is intelligent or how we can trick people believe about intelligence, you know, so if you're actually really, uh, as I said, starting, you know, to kind of explore this whole world of AI, this is a great introduction to it. It really puts things into perspective, you know, to really what this technology is and how that terminology relates to real life situations. And last, but certainly not least, it's so your book number 10. So if, you know, you thought, okay, you know, this whole, you know, new chapter in digital image processing and AI is something I could explore. This is the most practical book of all that I have presented so far. And if you're looking to kind of, you know, get your hands dirty by coding a little bit with Python, and if you want to do some color sense, you're going to have to start coding, I'm afraid. Then this book by Dr. Adrian Rosenbrock, uh, it's called Deep Learning for Computer Vision um, using Python is one I would recommend. Now, Dr. Adrian Rosenbrock, if you imagine, sounds like a, like a very kind of scientific and you think about some professor doctor, but it's actually a young, you know, professor doctor, <laughs> really cool. And with a great talent to explain, you know, how things work and book is also practical. You can actually really code and develop and you know some of your first, you know, deep learning algorithms, you know, you're going to learn about neural networks, about convolutions, CNNs, progressions and so on. And so on everything really you know this is kind of you know what you need in order to progress inside the deep learning thanks for watching and i hope you like this video and if you have some questions that you would like to get answers then email me on what would dado do at gmail.com and don't forget to subscribe to get more of cool videos like this one